Oh my. So in 2006, March 24th, Falcon 1 had its first flight. You guys, I was born on March 24th. Um, this is a sign. Yeah, this is a sign. I was already excited enough to find out that March 14th is SpaceX's 20 year anniversary. But then I kept reading liftoff and I found out that on March 24th, they had their first flight. So is this a video about the fact that I'm turning 30 or the fact that you guys all really need to read this book? Could be a little bit of both. But on this day, imagine if you will, that you are thousands of miles away from LA. You're one of the first SpaceX employees. You've been working so hard to make a rocket and here's what happens. Okay, I apologize in advance if I say some of these words incorrectly. I tried to look them up on Google. So hopefully Kwajalein Atoll and Omelik is how these are supposed to be pronounced. But let's turn to page 86 if we will, just so that we can relive March 24th, 2006. When the launch range reopened in March, SpaceX declared itself ready to fly the Falcon 1 rocket. The launch control team awoke early on Friday, March 24th, if they rested at all in their rooms. Inside the Spartan flight control room, Musk paced and fretted. He'd already flown out to the atoll on his private jet for a handful of static firings and launch attempts and had grown eager to see the Falcon 1 fly. Later, he would temper public expectations before important launches, but he had not yet learned this lesson in 2006, months before the Falcon 1 flight. Musk had told Jennifer Reingold, a reporter at Fast Company, that the Falcon 1 rocket had a well over 90% chance of success in its first launch. Well, he's learned. All right, so let's get to the launch. Despite the interruptions from the boss, the countdown proceeded more or less smoothly. And to almost everyone's surprise, the clock hit T minus zero without any kind of stop. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Zero. The rocket's Merlin engine fired and it started to rise. After more than a year of building up two launch sites, Chinnery watched from her vehicle control station. She could hardly believe her eyes as the rocket began to climb. Quote, we finally counted down to zero, she said. And when you've tried so many times and it hasn't gone, you don't necessarily cheer right at zero because you're still half expecting the rocket to turn itself off and not go anywhere. So we waited a couple of seconds and then you realize that it's actually flying away. It was incredible incredibly euphoric. For five seconds, and then 10, the Falcon 1 rocket climbed above the sand, coral, and sea. Its flame burned brightly. It had actually launched. Nervous energy gave way to exhilaration. Just as quickly, within seconds, everything started to go wrong. Well, it was the first to notice a problem with the Merlin engine. Oh, shit, he exclaimed. Then everyone did. The engine itself seemed to be on fire. So they quickly found out that a fuel leak near the top of the main engine led to this catastrophic fire. I can't imagine being one of the team members and having all of your hard work kind of destroyed right before your eyes and then having to clean up all of the pieces of Falcon 1 to piece together exactly what happened. And we know that today SpaceX embraces and even encourages failure. But at the time, this was kind of a new concept to them and a new experience, which I'm sure was not easy. In fact, Elon wrote a note to his employees offering some support and comfort. He said other iconic rockets had failed often during early test launches, including the venerable European Ariane fleet, the Russian Soyuz and proton boosters, the American Pegasus, even the early Atlas rockets. Quote, having experienced firsthand how hard it is to reach orbit, I have a lot of respect for those that persevered to produce the vehicles that are mainstays of space launch today. SpaceX is in this for the long haul and come hell or high water, we are going to make it work. So that's just a little bit of a chapter in Liftoff by Eric Berger, you guys. This book is so good, so good. If you're unfamiliar with the history of SpaceX, they've gone through so many failures and they've come out the other side every single time, still determined, still pushing forward. It's crazy to think of the Falcon 1 days compared to Starship now and trying to get to orbit and all of the challenges with Raptor 2 and producing engines at scale quickly, efficiently. It's just 
crazy to me. It really, this book gives me so much respect for SpaceX and I become more and more excited about the mission and everything that they've overcome and everything that they're still working to achieve. It's a really great book and just more confirmation that I, I was meant to do this because, you know, March 24th, March 24th. Uh, yeah, but I am turning 30 and you know what one of the most exciting things for me as I Start this new decade of my life is growing this channel I have so many ideas for content and interviews and videos that I'd like to produce I so appreciate all of your support. It's just crazy to me that last February So a little over a year ago. I only had around 200 subscribers and now we're at almost 40,000 and I would like to keep that going. I really, really love making content that is enjoyable, informative, educational for you. A little bit about me, I've been in TV news for the last eight years, so I know how to ask questions. <laughs> That's for sure. And I really like bringing you unique, you know, stories that no one else in the space tube uh, niche here is covering. So I like how I went to Scott Manley's house. That was something that I think was really fun and different from what you might be used to seeing on YouTube. So if you guys have any other ideas that you would like me to cover, please let me know. I, I know that my living room it's not that exciting, but I do have some exciting trips coming up. And so hopefully you guys enjoy the content that I produce. And as always, thank you so much for the support. Um, leave me a comment below what you were most impressed about with SpaceX. I know that pretty much all of us here on the channel are big fans and reading this book, I mean, there's like countless situations where I'm impressed by them. So I wanna hear from you guys what impresses you or inspires you the most about SpaceX? Leave a comment below. If you're not already subscribed to Ellie in Space, make sure to hit that button and I'll see you soon. I just realized that that song, 2020, 20, 24, 24, you guys, 24. Whoa, wait, 24, 42. That's it, that's all I have to say.